So this hadith shows what? It's a dalil ala sihatil qiyasi wal i'tibaru bin nadari. That is permissible to do qiyas and to look into it. And I advise you all to go to Imam Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti who refuted Ibn Hazm in the issue of qiyas. Ibn Hazm said, rahimahullah ta'ala, that qiyas is not permissible. And the argument he brought forward, which is, he said that the qiyas is not, it is not permissible. And the reason why it's not permissible is because the first person who ever done qiyas was shaitan. Iblis was the first one to do analogy. How? They said that Iblis said to Allah ta'ala, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِنُهُ I'm better than him. And where did he take the analogy from that he's better? He took it from his creation. He's whatever he was made from. Are you with me? Shaykh Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqiti, he, he refuted him in his tafsir. رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى رَحْمَةً وَاسِعًا نعم. وهو متضمن للعدل وما يعرف به العدل. So قياس is based upon what? It's based on عدل justice. Shaykh Rasulullah Taymi said a speech of his that we have to really look into on and 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 listen. Inshallah Taala. He said, القياس الصحيح حق. The قياس which is صحيح is true. It's حق. فإن الله بعث رسوله because that we know Allah sent his messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم بين العدل لي with justice. وَأَنزَلَ الْمِيزَانَ And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He sent down the scale مَعَ الْكِتَابِ with the book. Are you with me? وَالْمِيزَانُ the scale يَتَضَمَّنُ الْعَدْلِ It consists of it justice, fairness. وَمَا يُعْرَفُ بِهِ الْعَدْلِ And that which justice is known for. وَقَدْ فَسَّرُوا إِنزَالَ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ بِأَنْ أَلْهَمَ الْعِبَادَ مَعْرِفَةِ ذَلِكَ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ يُسَاوِي بَيْنَ الْمُتَمَاثِلَيْنِ وَيُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ الْمُخْتَلِفَيْنِ وَهَذَا هُوَ الْقِيَاسُ الصَّحِيحُ That the, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and Allah تبارك وتعالى that they bring every two things which have something in common and every two things which have something they differ each other on something that they will take them separate وَهَذَا هُوَ الْقِيَاسُ الصَّحِيحُ and that is the qiyas which is sahih so based on that we will realize that Shaykh Abdul Rahman Nasr al-Sa'idi, the statement that he said before, whom did he take it from? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. And when we spoke about the life, the biography of Shaykh Abdul Nasr al-Sa'idi, we mentioned that he was who, one who gave a lot of consideration to the works of uh, Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyyah, both of them. So the Qiyas, it consists of justice. It consists of what? Justice. And وَمَا يُعْرَفُ بِهِ الْعَدْلَ And that which justice is known for. نعم. وَالْقِيَاسِ إِنَّمَا يُعْدَلُ إِلَيْهِ وَحْدَهِ إِذَا فُقِدَ النَّصِ This is a qa'idah. What I want you to all do, inshallah ta'ala, is from this point. وَالْقِيَاسِ إِنَّمَا يُعْدَلُ إِلَيْهِ وَحْدَهُ إِذَا فُقِدَ النَّصِ From there to the ending one is a qa'idah. So just put a bracket, inshallah ta'ala. It's a qa'idah. You have to memorize and learn. Which is what? The qiyas is only turned towards. I mean, a person goes towards the qiyas. When does he go towards it? He goes towards it when he can't find a text in this matter. He can't find a, a clear-cut nas in this matter. Well, what does he result to? He results to qiyas. Wal qiyasu analogy. Innama yu'dalu. We only go towards qiyas. Ilayhi wahdahu idha fuqida nasu When a text is not found. When we can't find an explicit text. When we can't find an explicit text, we will result to analogy. So the qa'id is still going on here. فَهُوَ أَصْلٌ يُرْجَعُ إِلَيْهِ إِذَا تَعَذَّرَ غَيْرُهُ It's an asal, which we go back to. فَهُوَ أَصْلٌ يُرْجَعُ إِلَيْهِ إِذَا تَعَذَّرَ غَيْرُهُ The kitab and the sunnah are the asal. We only result to other than the kitab and the sunnah when we don't have we don't have an explicit text. When we don't have the Kitab and the Sunnah explicitly mentioned in this matter, as this matter may be a nazil, a matter that introduced itself now, which hasn't been seen before. Qiyas is the way to explain it or to tackle it. Naam. وَهُوَ مُؤَيِّدٌ لِلنَّصِ فَجَمِيعُ مَا نَصَ الشَّارِعُ عَلَىٰ حُكْمِهِ فَهُوَ مُوَافِقٌ فَهُوَ مُوَافِقٌ فَهُوَ مُوَافِقٌ فَهُوَ مُوَافِقٌ فَهُوَ 
موافق للقياس لا مخالف لا مخالف له وهو مؤيد للنص قياس support aids مؤيد means aids do you mean so the word aids they took it from the English like Arabic language مؤيد aids للنص it gives it support to the text فجميع ما نص الشارع everything which the الشارع the kitab and the sunnah have mentioned على حكمه in its ruling you see فهو موافق it's in agreement with the analogy doesn't oppose it قياس any evidence that you find in the kitab and the sunnah analogy won't go against it and a, and a, and a correct analogy doesn't go against the kitab and the sunnah they go hand in hand they support one another Naam. so that fasal that we just took we learned the following we learned that the qiyas is built upon, upon four pillars it is built upon these four pillars when these four pillars are correctly done, then and only then is the qiyas sahih. It is, as is a hukum, and a fara' and an asal, and the illatun tajma'u baynahuma. Very good. The example that we gave for this is what? The example that we gave for this is the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yaqdi al-qadi wa huwa ghadban. A judge should not judge between two if he's angry and we said that's the asal and the fara is what the fara is al-khawf um, al-shadid or al-ju' al-shadid person is excessively, excessively hungry what is the illa that they both have in common the illa is that both of them the thought process of a person is tampered with the person can't think clear what is the hukum that this one had at the beginning which is what Anger. What was the ruling regarding that one? It was hurma, taharim, nahi, prohibition. So we give this one to have taharim as well. Because why? It has the same illa with it. The qiyas and the asal, uh, the, qiyas, the qiyas is correct. The asal is this one, the fara is this one, the hukum in between them is this one, and the illa that we mentioned is this one. The shaykh also told us in this point that the shari'ah, the shari'ah, the Allah wa ta'ala, the legislator, he is wise. And the Sharia brings together everything that have something in common. And anything that differ from one another, it distinguishes between them. Now, also the Qiyas, which is Sahih, it is the scaling in which Allah sent down in the Quran. Didn't Allah wa ta'ala mention that He sent in the Quran? Uh, in the Quran, Allah says, Allah الذي أنزل الكتاب بالحق والميزانة. Allah is the one who set down the Quran with haq and he set down the scale. The scale is qiyas. The qiyas is the scale in which Allah mentions in that ayah, Surah Al-Shura, ayah 17. So the qiyas is what Allah set down the scale. وَهُوَ مُتَضَمِّنُ لِلْعَدْلِ And the qiyas which is sahih consists of justice. It consists of justice. And he also told us a qa'idah which is very important that we learn here which is that the qiyas which is correct, we only result to it, we only result to it when we can't find an explicit text. And we only result to it when we can't find a explicit text. And that the qiyas which is sahih should not be thought, we should not think it goes in opposition towards the what? The text. Rather they go hand in, hand in hand. Naam. Faslun. Qawaidu wa dhabitu. فقهية أخذها الأصوليون من الكتاب والسنة. هي وجنا الآن أصول مستنبطة من الكتاب والسنة. Principles which are taken from the kitab and the sunnah. These principles, these are now the sheikh, the sheikh, he's now going into what is known as قواعد الأصولية. Before he was talking about, ها, sorry, he now went into قواعد الفقهية. The sheikh now he's going into what? قواعد فقهية he's going into and this is الشيخ ابن الشيخ عبد الرحمن ناصر السعدي his books are not only أصول الفقه the sheikh brings قواعد الأصولية and قواعد الفقهية together okay so we've now studied we've now studied أصول الفقه and now he's going to go to some قواعد أصولية قواعد فقهية which we've already dealt with it in our book in his book that he authored, the Kitab Qawaid al-Fiqiyah, 
But inshallah ta'ala will go over it again bi al kareem So the Shaykh he's going to mention the he's going to mention these qawaid and dawabit fiqhiyya. What's the difference between qawaid and dawabit? Qaida and dawabit, the difference between it is qaida is something that goes in every chapter. Qaida goes everywhere. You can use it in every chapter. Whereas a dabit, it's specific to a particular chapter. So the Shaykh is going to mention those which he said. Naam. Where did the usuliyin, where does the qawaid, where is the istimdad? Where is the qawaid fiqhiyya and the qawaid al usuliyya? Where is it taken from? It is taken from the kitab and the sunnah and also the Arabic language. It is also, so that it's rooted from the kitab and the sunnah. Naam, faddal. وأخذ الأصوليون من الكتاب والسنة أصول كثيرة بنوا عليها أحكام أحكام كثيرة جدا. ريد تنوين أحكام كثيرة. أحكام كثيرة جدا ونفعوا وانتفعوا بها. The أصوليون the أصوليون are who the scholars who deal with this field أصول الفقه. They took from the Kitab and the Sunnah, they took Usul. They took what? Usul. And we, def- we, we mentioned what the word Usul means, right? When we mentioned Usul and Fiqh, we mentioned what Usul means. They took from it what? They took so- from it Usul, from the Kitab and the Sunnah. Kathiratun, a lot. Banaw alayha, they built upon those Usul, Ahkam and rulings. Kathiratun, a lot. Jiddan, excessively. Wa nafa'u, wa nafa'u, wa biha. They benefited. Others and they benefited for themselves. When nafa'u, they benefited others. When tafa'u biha, and they also benefited from it. So we're going to go into the first one. Hey, the first one, hey, which is. فَمِنْهَا الْيَقِينُ لَا يَزُولُ بِالشَّكْلِ أَدْخَلُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْعِبَادَةِ أَدْخَلُوا أَدْخَلُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْعِبَادَةِ فَالْمَعَامَ فَال فَالْمَعَامَلَاتِ فَالْمُعَامَلَاتِ فالمعاملات والحقوق شيئا كثيرا فمن حصل له الشك في شيء منها رجع إلى الأصل إلى الأصل متيقن متيقن The Sheikh now he said the first one is اليقين certainty لا يزول it is not removed بالشك with doubt so the first one he mentions is al yaqinu certainty la yazulu it is not removed bishaki without in other words they sometimes say al yaqinu certainty la yuzalu it is not removed it's also said bishaki this qaida which is al yaqinu certainty an example for it is if a person is upon tahara i am sure i have certainty that i am upon Tahara. I mean, I have my wudu. I have my ablution. I've done my wudu. I am sure. I, because I prayed Fajr with Tahara. But then Dhuhr comes in. And I become what? Halzala. Did it remove from me my purity? Or, back, uh, or am I baqi? Am I still remaining upon my Tahara? I'm doubtful. At this point, we say Al Aslu, the Asal is what? The asal is what? You were mutawadli, that you were upon, or the certainty is that what you were? You were upon a tahara. And we won't remove, or we won't leave that certainty for the doubt of whether you broke it. So we'll stick to it. What's the evidence for this uh, qa'ida? The evidence for it is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. That the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, um, la yansarif, la yansarif, he should not leave one of you the salah hatta yasma'a sawtan aw yajida rihan unless he unless he hears a sound or he smells a and a fragrance if he smells it or he would you call it hears a noise then this is certainty he leaves a prayer but if he's a person who's shak don't base anything on the shak if a man who's married to his wife, he, a man's married to his wife, and then he thinks to himself, لو شك رجل, a man has a doubt. هل طلق زوجته? Did I divorce my wife? أم لا? Or, I, or did I not? We will say to him, 
لم تطلق you haven't divorced your wife and ولك أن and it's permissible for you to have intimacy and relationship with your wife based on what istishab al nikah we're basing it upon what istishab we're going back to the original asal the certainty which was what you were married to this woman nikah took place people were there when you married your wife your marriage remains here and we'll stick to that so the biqa we remain ala al hukm biqa al hukm ala al yaqeen we're going to base this upon the certainty and here brothers if you've heard me i've just said the word istishab and i think we've taken the word istishab we did take the word we took istishab istishab means biqa ma kana ala ma kan it means if a person owns a house okay and you claim you claim that you bought this house from him who is who is the owner of the house the one who's living in it the one who everybody knows that he had the house the one who wants to take the house he has to go bring bayina evidence that this house was sold to him these are called istishab the certainty which is the asal we're going to stick to that and we're going to leave off what is what is doubtful what is we're not sure of so because we said that istishab and this qaida it deals with istishab it's obligatory on me to explain to you guys the matters pertaining to asal when we want to bring a matter back to the asal i have to explain to you that the asal the asal of a mas'ala to say this is the asal we're going to go back to asal on this issue is of four types the first one inshallah ta'ala is it's matters a text has been found in affirming this we have a text in which that text says to us um the permissibility and it states that you're allowed to do this like for example are you allowed to eat a rabbit yes you're allowed to eat uh, eat a rabbit based in the hadith sahih al-bukhari and muslim naam this shows me what that the eating of the arnab i don't need to go to asal or anything i don't need to resort to that my evidence here is clearly stated i have a nas a text that clearly stated this one so i will say to you akhi the arnab is permissible if you ask me where's your evidence i will say to you my evidence is the hadith sahih al bukhari and muslim the second type the second type is a matter which tahrim haram came regarding this matter clear cut haram are you with me for example allah tabarak wa ta'ala he prohibited us from eating the meat of the uh, swine we're not allowed to eat um, the pigs we're not allowed to eat a pig because allah tabarak wa ta'ala said inna ma harrama alaykum al mayta wa al dam wa lahm al khinziri allah prohibited us from us the eating of the the pig meat so we're not allowed to have it so this mas'ala in this matter we don't say al asl fi al ibah the asl is that it was permissible la why what's the reason because we will say qad warada it has come to us a dalil which prohibits us hukmul man' a hukum which is prohibition that prevents us from you can't go to the istishab here the third type is which one a mas'ala the it being mubah it is a text for it the sharia clearly it showed that it's mubah at this point the third one was what a permissibility of a mubah was found and also a evidence of prohibition was found both of them at the same time a text that says it's mubah and a text that says it's haram both of them are present so we have dalil ibaha and we have the dalil tahrim both of them which one do we give precedence here nuqaddimu fihi dalil tahrim we will give precedence to which one the evidence that makes it haram why na'malu fihi we implement here we al ihtiyat to be on the safer side because of the qawaid al tarjih the ulama take and of course based on the hadith of Umar ibn Bashir inna al halal bayyin wa inna al harama bayyin wa baynahuma umur mushtabihat 
So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدْ اسْتَبْرَعَ لِدِينِ وَعِرْضِهِ وَمَنْ وَقْعَ فِي الشُّبُهَاتِ وَقَعَ فِي الْحَرَامِ كَالْرَاعِ يَرْعَى حَوْلَ الْحِمَى يُوشِكُ أَنْ يَرْتَعَ فِيهِ So you stay away from it. دَعْ مَا يَرِيبُكَ إِلَى مَا لَا يَرِيبُكَ And evidence, like that. The fourth one is, a matter. There is no evidence that says it's permissible. There is no evidence that says it's haram. There is no evidence that says there's nothing. So the Sharia is quiet about it. This one, this one, we will say based upon if it's mu'amala, if it's transaction, uh, if it's eat, food to eat, if it's clothing to wear, and it's not a matter related to what? Ibada. It's not a mas'ala, it's not a matter of ibada. Then here we say al aslu. The asal is that it is, it is what? The asal is that it's permissible. And that we are allowed to what? We are allowed to eat this animal. We're also allowed what? Uh, we're allowed to eat this animal. We're allowed to wear these clothes. The asal is. Are you with me? The asal is that it's permissible. Food is the asal. They're eating the asal. Also even water, the asal, that is pure. All of that we take it back to the? We take it back to the asal of the sharia. And the sheikh is going to bring uh, matters pertaining to this.